Hey, I'm feeling a little lo-fi today, and I think you will too once you see some of the results that I've got out of this beautiful little box of film. This here is Kodak Ektachrome 64T, expired in July of 1983 and not cold kept. It's somewhat been dry kept, although I have my suspicions. It smells a little, a little mildewy, but I shot a 4x5 on this Crown graphic special right here. Uh, fantastic little camera. Nice and easy to hold in the hand and even has a rangefinder, which is fantastic. Well, follow me and I will show you my adventures with developing this incredibly expired film in Cinestills, uh, whatever it is, creative slide chemistry. I'm using dynamic chrome, which gets me slightly better results, but also is really fiddly, and I think you'll see why in a moment. So, first things first, I want to get this up to the temperature of everything here in the water bath, which is like about 105-ish or so. So we're going to go ahead and warm up the tap and wait for this for, I don't know, maybe a minute or so. Then we pre-wash in here. It's pretty normal. Uh, it just gets everything up to temp. Uh, sometimes it'll remove stuff like halation layers and things like that. And, and I guess maybe some dust and debris. Who knows? I'm not an expert in that bit, but I do know seems to help. With film as old as this as well, I imagine that bringing it up to temperature a little bit before it starts getting hit with the first dev probably wouldn't hurt it much if at all. This feels like 105. So, we got this bad boy filled with water. It's heating up a little bit right now, and we'll let it kind of soak and chill. We'll pour it out, and we'll throw the first dev in. So, give me a minute, and we'll be right back. Okay. So, minutes passed. Let's go ahead and let's dump. Vaguely gray. Not exactly scientific, but what do you expect? Uh, the first dev being an E6, a, a black and white developer that creates the mask that is used for reversal, which, I don't know, I'm sure I'll talk about that at some point. I am utterly fascinated by the, the technology of reversal film. But with this being a black and white developer, it's susceptible to the usual oxidization that you'd expect. So getting something like one of these little accordion flex bottles, very, very highly recommended. It's kept this one pretty much clear for God knows how many reuses. For this one, I've been pushing all the way to 15 minutes. God damn it, eBay. I've been pushing with the dynamic chrome uh, about to 15 minutes or so, and the last time I did that, I still didn't get full clearing, although I did shoot that at 64, and this last one I did, I tried to overexpose as much as I could, including reciprocity failure, although apparently 64T, not too bad reciprocity-wise. So I don't know, let's set a timer for 16 minutes. We're gonna be imprecise. I've got enough of these sheets to last a lifetime. approaching our time so let us grab out our solution from in here Ooh, Jesus very wet the only negative of the accordion bottles is they hold a shit ton of water in those folds they are deceptive do not trust them okay at five seconds we'll yank give it a swish Pull this off. Let's start running water now, and then kill that. And as you can see, my developer, oops, oh, you can't see. As you can see, my developer is running pretty clear still. It has the slightest tinge of yellow and gray to it, but that's to be expected. It's not turning brown, which would mean that we've gotten into uh, depleting the oxidization protection, I believe I read. So, pro tip. If you are working with your own home chemicals and all of a sudden you start seeing stuff turn brown, you're probably exhausting oxidization protection. Not fun. So with this, you just kind of 
lightly squeeze this down until the liquid barely touches the top. Give it a screw. And now there is basically no air inside of this tube. Fantastic. Put that back in the bath for now. And next we need to do our first dev rinse. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this warm back up. There we go. Ow. When it starts hurting, bring it back to the middle. Okay. There we go. That should be about 105. I'll just keep an eye on it. I'll give it a bit of a slosh. Now, typically, I don't get much color in these pores. Uh, most often, you'll get kind of a grayish, maybe even a light purplish, just your usual um, kind of in-between bath rinse kind of color. Nothing too shocking here. We just do it for Cenestil's Creative Slide Kit. You do this six times between First Dev, Color Dev, and Color Dev and Blix. Okay, so that's all good to go now. Next thing comes our Color Dev, just normal. We're gonna go ahead. You can see here, it's got a kind of yellowish brown color to it now. And that is slightly darker than its original. And normally it's a little bit like a pale yellowy almost, if I remember correctly. But as it ages and as it oxidizes and everything else, it'll start browning as well as as it depletes, it loses a lot of that uh, kind of lightness and turns a bit deep and dark. So, One thing to note, by the way, the Cinestill Creative Slide Kits, Color Dev and Blix are both process to completion baths, essentially. As for the uh, Color Dev, Color Dev is more than six minutes. So I typically do about seven, seven and a half or so for the color and reversal bath. And then the bleach fixer, the Blix bath, goes for six to 10 minutes, depending on how badly you need it cleared. And typically you can tell if you're clearing correctly if when you hold it up to the light, A, you don't see a lot of milky, kind of weird, almost brown looking negatives, which means something's not cleared or you're underdeveloped, which I'll get to that soon. It, this part kind of sucks about the Cinestil kit. And properly cleared or dye cloud black, the density is gonna show as kind of a, uh, a deep purple when you hold it up to the light and let light shine th directly through it. Um, it's not actually pure black in most cases. It will pass some light through and it typically comes through as a violety, reddish, warm kind of tone. Anyways, now I gotta wait for the color dev to finish its thing. So I guess see you in a minute. Good. Get this ready. Beep. Lovely. And it's going to do that, of course. But that should be decent. Okay, now this should get some color. Yep. As per usual, I typically get about a, a bluish or a grayish kind of color for the first two pores. And then after that, it tends to run magenta. Don't ask me why, I have absolutely no idea, but for slide film in general, the second color dev pour tends to follow those rules for me. Yep, there you go. Very light magenta. Okay, so now what we do is we grab from our bath over here, our Blix, which you can see here from this label, obviously says Blix. We're gonna go ahead and take this and give it a chug, 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 chug. Oh yeah, there we go. About half, that's about 500 mil in there. That should do fine, especially for just a single sheet. Technically you don't need as much, but the 3D printed reel, which I'll have to show you that, it's quite interesting. A, made for a Jobo processor. B, uh, doesn't really fit the 4x5 stuff super great. It tends to pop out, which is incredibly frustrating. And C, I literally can't load more than a single sheet, even though it's designed for six. Great. So this will run for about six to 10 minutes. So let me go ahead and open up timer, delete. We'll run it for like, I don't know, 
eight minutes or so. So now we get to the part that I've been hinting at, and that is that Cinestill's first dev is kind of fucky. So when I was first developing with this, I was reading the instructions and maybe not reading them thoroughly enough, and I thought six minutes processing was the same for all three dev types. It's not. So when you are using a one plus one dilution of your uh, uh, dynamic chrome stock, you are supposed to run it for nine minutes, not six. Huh. So when you run it at six, you end up with Density City right here. Now, there is an image here. I doubt you can see it, but there is a very, very, very faint image of the uh, place I went to grab lunch today. And eh, this was run for six minutes. Uh, not particularly nice, and I have to admit, it is frustrating that the, the dev times are so weird. Now, on top of that, when I did dev time everything correctly, I got this out. So, I did actually run this for nine minutes. Uh, this is some Velvia 50 from 2003-ish, which... Obviously, expired film is going to be a little unpredictable, but I'm pretty sure that expired film should be clearer, not necessarily almost entirely opaque. This was shot at box speed, maybe actually a little bit overexposed now that I think about it, and then developed at stock solution levels, nine minutes, normal temperature for everything, and I blixed it as long as humanly possible. I even tried all sorts of unholy concoctions, and you can see just at the end over here, yeah, barely get some images, but mm, that's not the greatest. I gotta admit, it's pretty frustrating. So I shot some more uh, in one of my 6x6, the TLRs, which, eh, stay tuned. They're really fun. I like them a lot. I shot another roll of this Velvia 50, exposed at box, and then developed for basically a two-stop push almost. And that gave me that usual positive reversal look. Nice density, but also a little bit of actual D-min, which, you know, this is not lacking in D-max. Its density is high. Its lack of density is lacking. So, it takes a lot of experimentation. I've found that you've got to push really hard with Velvia, and it might have a slight blue cast, but for the most part, it turns out pretty good. And the fact that I'm getting density like this and also decent looking pictures when I actually develop correctly is pretty remarkable for 2003. Oh god, Jesus, almost 20 year old film. Fuck. Here's some Ektachrome 50HC that I had shot, and when I pull this up, you might notice there's actually a cleared slide in between all of this incredibly color cast blue looking stuff. And this single image of my wife. I assume I must have blown this out incredibly, and if I remember correctly, looking at this, this is actually a roll that I processed correctly at nine minutes, and you're still getting eh, not quite enough clearing here in this leader. Not good. But I do want to give Dynamic Chrome a chance, because if it's able to recover some of these expired film stocks, I would be ecstatic, because slide film is not cheap. Expired slide film is sometimes cheap. Okay, so we got about six seconds on this. Let's grab this out. This. Now, obviously, this one is not time critical, so we can take our time here. Whoops. Help to turn it off. We can take our time getting this out. We'll just keep it moving a little bit just so the Blix isn't sitting, obviously. Since I've got this in a tank, if it's sitting, it will only cover a portion of the film. So, now that we got that done, let's give this a couple of rinses, and we'll see what's going on here. That was the last little bit, our Blick step, and now, let's see if uh, about a hundred seconds of exposure was too long. It probably was, if we're being realistic here. <coughs> Just having a grand old time. Holy shit. Oh my god. Okay, I don't know if you can see this yet, but... Wow, this looks shockingly okay. Huh. Okay. 
Oh. Who knew that a hundred seconds was what you needed to get this fucking thing to react correctly? <laughs> so now, since I load this emulsion side out, we can just go ahead and let that rinse for a minute. Okay. So dynamic chrome, weirdly enough, seems to be pretty okay. Dynamic chrome, weirdly enough, seems to actually be pretty okay at rescuing some of these old films. And I don't know why. Like, there's an obvious color cast to it, a little bit of one at least. But again, when it comes to 40-year-old, uh, I guess at the time, probably relatively early on in the E6 development lifetime, this is pretty remarkable. Oop, ah! Well, there you go. That is a genuine image there, huh? I really need to get this back on here so I can actually do things with it. I need to finish rinsing it, and I don't want to. I also need to photo flow it still. And this is limper than a fucking spaghetti noodle, though. Cooked double al dente. Oh my god, please, just fucking channel. Please. Okay, you know what? That's good enough. So what we're going to do, we're going to return this back to the tank for a little bit. We're going to give it a couple full fills and dumps just to make sure that it's actually rinsed properly. And then we're going to take the almighty Kodak Professional PhotoFlow 200. Just a couple of spritzes of this little bad boy and we'll be good to go. So while we PhotoFlow this, I can dry it and we can take a look at some scans. There we go. Okay, for photo flow, we'll go ahead and kick it out to something a little cooler. Let the tank fill until it just barely tops. About there. Now I just pull this off to the side, yank it out. Spritz, spritz, dunk, and give it a rotate. I will mention, this stuff does hurt if you get in a cut, so don't get it in a cut. Also, don't get Blix in a cut. Blix really hurts in a cut. I don't know why. Actually, most of these chemicals hurt if they get in. Don't put photochemicals in cuts. Don't do that. It's a bad idea. Okay. This is probably flowed enough. Oh, Jesus. This thing's like leaping out. Okay. And there is this little bad boy. So, here, if you look at it from this direction, you can see a light blue hue to it and from this direction kind of a grayish one so interesting i have no idea if that's normal but i can tell you this is the actual orientation of the image so as you can see here we've got the earlier shot that i had of the burger joint which you can barely see anything on and then we've got this shot from just a minute or two ago which has incredible clarity i gotta admit it looks incredibly good when you see the two side by side it's no question about which one has more detail in it so i guess the real answer is overexposed to shit when you're shooting ectochrome 64t that expired in the 80s and then make sure that you overdevelop to shit when you go ahead and actually run the first dev now this right here is that little 3D printed reel I was talking about. You can see how it's very similar to your usual Patterson reels. Something kind of like this, you know, with your channels that run everything concentrically around. Uh, the only issue is, like I said, I can't really load more than a single sheet on here at a time reliably. It tends to have parts like pop out, you know, and then that creates weird tents against other bits in the actual channel with it, you know, along these three here and then the three on the other side. It turns into a big mess. It ends up like scooping fluid and flowing it around weird and not very good. I'm probably going to look into maybe making one of my own, but I don't know if I'm talented enough to do that really. But here we have a film plank with an undeveloped bit of Ektachrome 64T in it. And we're gonna go ahead and load it into here. We're gonna try something though. I'm gonna show you the part in the dark because the camera I'm filming on right now, some cheap Sony Hi8 camcorder of some sort, it has night shot. And of course, this film is not sensitive to infrared whatsoever from what I can tell. Most films aren't. 
So I'm sure a little bit of exposure for maybe a minute or two. Shouldn't be too much. Let's see what the fuck happens here, I guess. This one I'm not too beat up over if it gets destroyed inadvertently. I, I just don't really care all that much about it. Um, as you can probably tell, it's very difficult to see what you're doing because it's dark. I don't know if you knew this about dark rooms. They tend to be quite, quite dim, to be honest with you. I've never figured it out myself. You'd think you'd want to be able to see what you're doing, right? Wait. Oh, shit. Right, you dumbass. The side that wasn't locked was the... Oh, God. Okay, so here you can see the code in the top right, potentially. So we've got emulsion side facing out. We remove this. This one was exposed about half the time the other one was. So this one is pretty damn short, comparatively. Probably about a stop. And I'm thinking I may push my first dev time a little bit, too, to compensate for that. But we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. This is very difficult. I also will say the other knock towards this is uh, trying to load is not fun in the dark. This thing is very frustrating. I'm sure I'm gonna, it's gonna be enlightening seeing how this looks while I'm completely blind. Now I typically, lately at least, have been taking the center uh, channel with this one. It tends to not put it under such extreme tension like the inner one does. That goes through a bit harsher of a curve, just owing to the fact that it's further in concentrically. Its orbit is just a little bit tighter. Now that is resting against its stop. I don't entirely trust it, but I mean it feels fine. So we're gonna go ahead and, there he is, put this in here. Oh, fuck. And now comes the really fun part where I remember that I don't remember where anything is. Ooh. And now, we're all good to go. Okay, and there you go. Loaded and ready for another day of Patterson fun. This was pretty fun, I have to admit. There's something about expired film that I very much like. I think some of it comes down to the unpredictable nature of you know, any sort of expired film, and especially any sort of color expired film. Getting results, though, like this here, off of this old 1983 Ektachrome, is pretty phenomenal, I have to admit. I'm beyond surprised at how much I was able to actually wrench out of this old, ancient film stock. And considering this is some of the first E6 process compatible slide film, it's a wonder that it still works as well as it does. Now that being said, I do think that the Cinestill Dynamic Chrome set can be a little bit uh, difficult to work with in a, a lot of different ways. Even at the suggested 1 plus 1 dilution, I still have yet to run it for just the suggested 9 minutes and have it come out with something uh, remotely close to what I was getting with my Unicolor set. This is significantly better and a lot closer, but this is also far off base of what they would tell me to do for it. I've got some more examples that I just went down to Royal Oak uh, and shot a couple of long exposures on Woodward utilizing this same film stock. Uh, we're talking like two minutes to uh, account for reciprocity and everything. So hopefully those have turned out okay, and I've also overexposed them slightly. So I'm going to do some more testing and see if I can figure out uh, how overexposed this needs to be to get closer to the nine minute baseline that I should be at regardless. And hopefully I will do that without sacrificing as much of the density if I can get image clarity like this, actual shapes and colors being accurate more or less with a very slight cast, try and pair it with this kind of density here from the Fujichrome, if I could manage to somehow strike a balance between these two uh, kind of looks, I think I'd have more or less uh, perfect slide film considering the age, though for what it's worth, I do think this is probably the closest that I can get to it looking as it should. But the clarity that I got out of this 
definitely shows that it is possible. I'll show some comparisons too between the two exposures that I took and I'll list relative times that I've used developing both of them. I think I'll develop them both identically, so uh, the 15 minute first timer and then 8 and 8. So anyways, I've been Dylan and you've been watching me talk a lot about weird old expired slide film. If you want to try some of this stuff, go for it. Give it a shot. This stuff looked and smelled like it was stored in a fucking barn. And if I can manage to get an image like this out of it, I think anybody can manage to scrape something out of most color slide film that's expired. And by that proxy, even color negative film. Go wild, especially in the larger formats. For some reason, they hold together better. So experiment, uh, cut all this out.